In the last video, we solved a one-step equation. Now we're solving multi-step equations. This is 19b. There's a link to 19a in the description if you missed it, okay? Some algebraic equations need several steps to solve. The most important thing to remember is that we're trying to isolate the variable to solve for that variable. And don't worry about the order of operations because we're actually going to do it in reverse. 3x plus 5 equals 17. Well, 3x means 3 times x. We can't multiply 3 times x. We don't know what x is. So we have to add a negative 5 to both sides of the equation to get rid of that 5. We end up with a 3x equals 12. Then we can divide each side by this coefficient 3 to make it a 1. We get 1x equals 4. See? If you're really confused, you need to go back and watch the previous video. So remember, when a variable is by itself, it actually has an invisible 1 in front of it. When we're doing subtraction or adding a negative, same thing, and we have a 5x and a 4, negative 4x, we're going to end up with just an x. It's a 1x. We just don't write the 1. If we have a 5x and we're taking away a 6x, we're going to end up with a negative x, which is really negative 1x. Okay, so just imagine that that, ne that one, that invisible one is there, okay? When an equation has the same variable on both sides of the equal sign, we can use inverse operations to group them to one side of the equal sign. Here is 15x plus 5 equals 10x plus 20. We need to get all the numbers on one side and then all the x's on one side. We can add a negative 5 to this side, that'll create a zero pair and get rid of it, and we can do the same thing on this side. Whatever we do on this side of the equal sign, we have to do on that side of the equal sign. Now this is gone. We have 15x equals 10x plus 15. 20 minus 5 is 15. We still need to get the x's together, so what we do is we can take this 10x away from this side and take a 10x away from this side. That's going to make this go down to a 5x. And this will be a 15. Now we have 5x equals 15. Now we can divide both sides of the equation by this 5 coefficient. And same numerator and denominator, we get 1x. Remember, it's invisible. And this is going to be a 3, so x equals 3. Let's take a look at this one. We don't have to do adding a negative. We can add a positive. Here we have a minus 6. So to get all the x's on one side and all the whole numbers on the other side, we can add 6 to both sides. That'll create a zero pair here. That'll give us a 24x equals 20x plus 8. Now to get the x's to one side of the equal sign, we can take this 20x away or add a negative, do the same thing to this side, and that's going to give us a 4x on this side and an 8 on this side. We can divide both sides by the coefficient 4, and we get a 1x, same numerator and denominator makes a 1, and that equals a 2. We have x equals 2. I've got lots of examples for you, so if you want to stick with me, here we've got 7x minus 7 equals 6x plus 9. We need to get them each to their proper side. We can make a zero pair of the coefficient and the variable to get the variable to one side. So we can take away this 6x here, or we could say add a negative 6x, same thing, right? And we do the same thing to this side, so it's balanced. Now, 7x plus a negative 6x is just going to be a 1x. We've got our invisible 1 in front of that x, that co coefficient 1, don't we? Now we have x minus 7 on this side and a 9 on this side. We still need to get the x by itself. So because we have a minus 7, we can add 7 to each side, and that'll create a zero pair here, and we'll just end up with an x equals 16. See? For this one, we've got a negative 3x minus 4 equals 2x plus 21. We can add a 3x to each side of this equation. That'll create a zero pair here, and we'll be left with the negative 4. And when we add the 3x over here, we get a 5x plus 21. Now we can take the 21 away from here and take a 21 away from here. 
so it's balanced on both sides. We're going to get a negative 25 equals 5x. We can divide both sides of this equation by the coefficient 5, and we get x equals negative 5. Okay? Now we've got parentheses. We have to do the distributive property to take care of these parentheses first. So we're going to do 4 times x plus 4 times 5. So we get 4x plus 20 equals 28. Now we can isolate the variable. We can take the 20 away from both sides of the equal sign. We're going to end up with 4x equals 8. Divide both sides by this coefficient 4. We get a 1x equals 2. So remember when you see these, you have to do distributive property, okay? And you follow the sign that's inside the parentheses, all right? We can't do inside these parentheses first because we don't know what x is, okay? So you got to do distributive property, all right? Now we've got this one, and we have to combine the like terms first. We've got an x plus 12 plus 4x. So on the same side of the equal sign, we've got two terms that are the same. So we can combine these together. This is really 1x, right? So we have a 1x plus a 4x. That would give us a 5x. And then we add that 12 to it. And then on this side, we have 2x plus 3. So now our new equation is 5x plus 12 equals 2x plus 3. Now we can isolate the variable. We can get rid of this 2x by adding a negative to each side, a negative 2x to each side that gives us a 3x on this side plus 12, and it'll equal that 3 because we made a zero pair here, didn't we? Now we can get the x to its own side by adding a negative 12 to both sides. That creates a zero pair here. And that gives us a negative 9 on this side. Now we have 3x equals negative 9. When we divide both sides of the equal sign by this coefficient 3, we get x equals negative 3. Now we can choose which side to isolate the variable to, the left side or the right side. It just depends on the zero pair we choose to make first. Okay? I could have chose to start with the numbers first. So look at this one. This is the exact same problem if you compare them. But instead of adding a negative 2x to each side first, I decided to go with adding a negative 3 to each side first. See? Same thing. I'm just starting it different and doing it differently. I'm going to get the same answer, though. Remember, the answer has to be an x equals negative 3. So if I add a negative 3 to each side, now I'm going to get 5x plus 9 equals 2x. Now I can get this x out of here by adding a negative 5x. That's going to give me a negative 3x on this side. Now I have 9 equals negative 3x. See? When I divide both sides by this negative 3 coefficient, we get negative 3 equals x. Same answer is here. I just did it in a different order. So there's more than one way to solve these. It just depends on which order you want to do it in, but you'll get the same answer. Okay? Just make sure you add or subtract first and then mul multiply or divide when you're trying to isolate a variable. All right? So this doesn't follow the order of operations. It goes in reverse because we're trying to isolate a variable. All right? For this one, we need to combine these like terms on this side of the equal sign. We need to combine these like terms. There's no variable here. We can do negative 8 plus 5. That's going to give us a negative 3. And on this side, if we have 3x and we take away 4x, we're going to have a negative 1x, aren't we? We've got our invisible 1 there. So we have a negative x plus 2 equals negative 3. Now to get the x by itself, we can add a negative 2 to each side of the equation. I don't have my plus sign here, do I? We add a negative 2 to each side of the equation. That gets rid of this as a 0 pair. Now we just have negative x equals negative 5. See? So remember that invisible 1 is there. So because we remember that invisible 1 is there, if it says negative x equals negative 5, we can divide both sides of the equation by that negative invisible 1. That's going to give us negative 1 over negative 1, same numerator and denominator, so we have an x. And a negative divided by a negative makes a positive, so we have x equals 5. See? 
I have a few more examples. We have 3x plus 7 minus 4x equals 6x plus 2. That's a mouthful, huh? We, gotta, we have to combine these like terms here. 3x minus 4x is negative x. So that means we have negative x plus 7 for this side. And then on this side, we have the 6x plus 2. We can get rid of this x on this side by adding x to both sides. That'll create a zero pair here. And that'll make this a 7x because there's an invisible 1 in front of that, isn't there? So we have 7 equals 7x plus 2. When we add a negative 2 to each side of the equation to get this x by itself to isolate it, we end up with a 5 equals 7x. Now we need to divide both sides of the equation by this coefficient 7. And when we do, we create a 1x on this side. But look, we create a 5 7 on this side. So sometimes the x will equal a fraction. And we don't need to do anything else. It is 5 7 See? You don't need to do 5 divided by 7. See how that happened? So that, that'll happen sometimes in algebra. And the answer is just x equals 5 7 OK? Here we've got parentheses on both sides of the equation. So we need to, need to do distributive property to both sides. So we need to go 5 times 3x plus 5 times 5. So 5 times 3x is 15x plus 5 times 5 is 25. And then it's plus that 4. On this side, we've got 4 times 2x, which is 8x, plus 4 times 5.5, which is a 22. We can combine the 25 and the 4 right here to get a 29. So now we have 15x plus 29 equals 8x plus 22. We can get rid of this x from this side by getting rid of it on the same amount on this side. We add a negative 8x to both sides. That's going to give us 7x on this side plus 29 equals 22. Now we can create a zero pair here so that x is more by itself, right? So we add a negative 29 that creates a zero pair here. But we, when we add a negative 29 to this side, we get a negative 7. Now we have 7x equals negative 7. We divide both sides by the coefficient 7. And we get x equals a negative 1. Negative 7 divided by 7 is negative 1. See? So you might see it where... You have to do it to both sides with the distributive property because there's parentheses on both sides. No big deal, all right? Got a couple more. Here we have negative 2x minus 4 equals 4x minus 10. I chose to start with the numbers first, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. That'll create a zero pair here. So I get negative 2x plus 6, because negative 4 plus 10 is a positive 6, equals 4x. Now, I can get this negative 2x out of here so that there's only an x on this side by adding a positive 2x to both sides of the equation. That creates a zero pair here, and we end up just dropping our 6, and 4x plus 2x is 6x. We divide both sides by this coefficient next to the variable, the 6, and we get x is equal to 1. See? Here we've got some decimals. 6.8y minus 2.4y equals negative 88. We just combine them. We do 6.8y minus 2.4y. Just like a regular subtraction problem, we get 4.4y. So now we have 4.4y equals negative 88. We divide both sides by this coefficient, 4.4, and we get y equals negative 20. One last one. We have 2x minus 15 equals negative 3x. So because we've already got this negative 3x on this side, we're going to leave the x's on this side. So we're going to get rid of the x on this side. So we add a negative 2x to both sides, and we get a negative 15 equals negative 5x. We divide both sides of the equation by this negative 5 coefficient, and we get a positive 3 equals x. That made a 1. Same numerator and denominator. See that? So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 223. 
And remember, you're going to add or subtract first, then multiply or divide to isolate a variable. All right. And remember, you can choose which side to isolate the variable to, the left or the right, depending on the zero pair you choose to do. Now, the next video is extremely important. We're going to be translating problems, word problems, into equations. That's Lesson 19C. The reason it's so important is most of the problems on the GED test are these word problems. You need to be able to pull them and take them and put them into equations, all right? So we're going to spend a lot of time on this to help you, okay? I've got links to Grade 7. Algebra 1, and now some Algebra 2 videos, plus the previous one, 19A, where we talked about one-step equations, okay? it's going to be links to these to help you, and we're getting deeper and deeper into this. If you have to watch a video more than once, if you have to watch this one a second time, no big deal. Go get something to drink or take a break and come back and watch the video again. Take notes if you have to, and watch the links in the description to help yourself, all right? and do the skill focus and do your best, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.